Hello and welcome to the third episode of Closure Tip of the Day screencast. I'm Juraj Martinka and in this episode I will show you how to quickly introspect values flowing through the threading macros using ordinary print statements. This technique might be useful if you don't want to use or you don't have access to advanced debugger or tracing functionality. Let's start with simple thread first macro example. Let's say uh, we want to introspect the value on the intermediate collection just after the two random ints are added to the end of the vector. Uh, what we can do here is just use this handy shortcut called the function and now we can see uh, all intermediate values. Uh, this is applicable only to the thread first macro, so it might be useful to create more generic function called spy. We'll just print line our value and return it. So instead of do to print line, we can quickly add spy and have the value printed as before. It might be useful to add some debug prefix to it to quickly identify our debug statement. Okay, let's move on to thread last macro example. As I said, we can't simply use a do to print line as before. That's because do to expects its argument to be in the first position. But the uh, thread last macro puts the argument in the last position to wrap this into anonymous function and put argument to proper position. And this is still not enough to understand why we, uh, it's uh, useful to examine the macro expansion of thread last macro. And as you can see here, this is expanded into the call of filter, some function, and then our anonymous function. But what we want to do here instead is to actually call our anonymous function. So we need to wrap this with extra parentheses and then call it and after that it works. Uh, anyway, it's just uh, easier instead of uh, this do to wrap in anonymous function uh, to call our spy function which works uh, perfectly fine for both first and last macro and we can see now the intermediate uh, value we can put another spy here to show uh, more information to understand what values are flowing through the macro Okay, the final example is uh, S threading macro, which uh, we can use when we have a mixture of uh, functions which expect, some of them might expect a collection to be in the first position, some of them in the last position, as is common case with sequences functions. Uh, so in uh, that case, uh, we can just define the place placeholder and then we can use our spy function to quickly introspect the value. So this is just the beginning. Let's put the same here, here and here. And now we will see all intermediate values, which uh, might be pretty useful in some cases. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episodes.